in this lecture we will continue our discussion of symmetrical components for a three phase system as we have seen in our previous lecture that according to the uh, theorem of symmetrical components any system of n phasors which are related with each other and are unbalanced can be broken into n sets of n symmetrical or n balanced phasors now since we are going to deal with the three phase system then it implies that we are going to have three sets of balanced phasors and each set will be having three phasors so let us say that we have a three phase system with phase a b and c the sequence phase sequence is a b c which implies that v a b is if in the reference direction that is zero angle then v b c for a balanced system will be 120 degree behind and v b v c a will be again 120 degree behind for a balanced system okay now since we are going to deal with unbalanced system so what we know that according to the theorem which we discussed in our previous lecture there will be three sets three sets of phasors okay and each set will have three phasors now these sets will be balanced now we also studied a thumb rule that the phase angle between the kth set for an n phase system is given by k times 360 degree over n okay now here n is equal to 3 for a three phase system that is the number of phases is 3 okay so for the first set in a three phase system the angular difference between each phasor will be having a difference of 360 over 3 that is 120 degrees okay and the second set will be having 2 into 360 degree over 3 that is 240 degree phase difference similarly the third set will be having a phase difference of 360 degree or it is equivalent to having a phase difference of 0 degree so we are going to have three sets set 1 set 2 set 3 and in the first set the phasors let us say i am going to uh, write it as let us say this is phasor va then vb will be having a phase difference of 120 degree and since i am having a phase sequence of abc so i will write it as b only vb will come here and this phase difference will be 120 degree similarly the phase difference between b and c will be again 120 degree this is vc okay so in this way i can have these three phasors now this is the set 1 so to represent it as set 1 i will write it as v1b v1a and v1c this one represents the first set here okay now we will draw the phases for the second set now as i already mentioned that the phases in each set are balanced with each other but they might not be balanced with respect to each set so the 
phase representing the phase A for the second set might not be in the same direction as that of the V1A. So, to show this or emphasize this point, I am showing V2A in another direction and the magnitude of this V2A can be different than V1A. Okay. Now, this is V2A phasor. Now, according to this thumb rule, the second phase, B phase will be 240 degree behind this first phase. So, let us say this is 240 degree. So, it will be Now, this phasor and this phasor will be having equal lengths since it is a balanced set. So, this is the second set phase B. Now, the phase C of the second set will have 240 degree angle with respect to this phase. Somewhere here. Okay. So, this will come out to be like this. So, this is the phase C for the second set. This angle is 240 degree again. Okay. So, in this way, I have drawn the second balance set of three phasors. The magnitude are equal for this set. Similarly, the magnitude of these three phasors will be equal with each other. The magnitude of this phasor might not be equal with this phasor. Okay, these phasors, these sets are balanced within themselves. They might not be having similar characteristics with respect to the other sets. Okay, now the third set, what we will do, we will consider a different direction again. Let us say this is the third set and It represents the phase A for the third set. Now, the second phase will be in the same direction and having same magnitude. So, it will also represent the phase B of the third set. Similarly, it will also represent the phase C of the third set. Okay. So, to show, I can show three phases of same length and same magnitude. Okay, so in this way, I have drawn three sets, set 1, set 2 and set 3. Now, we will observe one thing that the set 1 is having the same phase sequence A, B, C as that of the phase sequence which we have assumed for our three phase system. However, the second phase or the second set is having a phase sequence which is opposite in direction A, B, C. Okay, first set was having the same direction of phase sequence but the second set is having opposite direction. And it is having same direction, uh, all these phasors are in one direction only. Okay, so there is another nomenclature by which these three sets are known. This is called as positive sequence, this is called as negative sequence, and this is called as zero sequence. To emphasize the fact that the phase sequence of the first set is same as that of the three phase, uh, three set, three phase system which we have taken up and this second set is having opposite direction as that of the uh, phase sequence which we have taken up and this is not having any phase sequence. All the phases are in one direction. Now let us try to synthesize or draw the three phases for these three sets. Let us say 
I want to draw the phasor for the phase A. That is, I want to synthesize the phase A phasor using these three sets. So, as we already know that phase A will be written as the sum of the positive sequence phasor, the negative sequence phasor and the zero sequence phasor. Okay. So, we will add these three phasors now. So, V1A will be in this direction. This is V1A. V2A will be in this direction. Having a different length. This is V2A. So, their sum This is their sum. Okay. Now in this sum, I will add the third phasor, the zero sequence part. This is in this direction. V3A. So the sum of this and the zero sequence will give me the final phasor for the phase A. So this will be simply the phasor for the phase A. Similarly, if I want to draw the phasor for the B phase, positive sequence component, the negative sequence component and the zero sequence component. Again, what I will do, I will add the positive sequence component, which is in this direction, V, 1B, V2B is in this direction, V2B and their sum is this. So in this if I will add the zero sequence component which will be in this direction v3b so the sum of these two will give me the phasor for phase b this is the phasor for phase b you can clearly see that va and vb are of unequal length and they are not having an angular difference of 120 degree so in this way we can see that this does not represent a balanced three phase system. So in this way graphically also we can construct the phasors from the component sequence phasors or if we know the given phasor we can also find the component sequence phasors also graphically. Now what we will do we will formulate the matrix equation for symmetrical components and that we will do in the next slide. Now we have seen that the three phase phasors of, a, of an unbalanced system can be written in component form, symmetrical component form as the positive sequence phasor component, the negative sequence phasor component and the zero sequence component. Similarly for the phase B I can write the positive sequence component, the negative sequence component and the zero sequence components. These quantities are phasor quantities. Okay. So these will add according to the rules of phasor addition. This C phase will be written as sum of three components, positive sequence, negative sequence and zero sequence. Now here I have used zero instead of three because I want to clearly show that it is zero sequence component. Okay. Now we have seen that the angular difference is either 120 degree or some multiple of 120 degree. Okay. So for that, what we will do, we will define an operator A, 
विच इज नथिंग बट वन एंगल वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री ओके सो वॉट इट इज इट इज सिंपली वन इंटू कोस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री प्लस जे साइन वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री और कोस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री इज सिंपली कोस नाइंटी प्लस थर्टी डिग्री प्लस जे साइन नाइंटी प्लस थर्टी डिग्री ओके नाउ दिस इज सिंपली माइनस वन बाय टू दिस इज सिंपली जे रूट थ्री बाय टू और माइनस जीरो पॉइंट फाइव प्लस रूट थ्री बाय टू इज पॉइंट एट सिक्स ओके सो वी हैव डिफाइंड एन ऑपरेटर ए विच इज नथिंग बट वन एंगल वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री दिस इज सिंपली एन ऑपरेटर लेट अस से दिस इज अ फेजर विच इज सिंपली लेट अस से टू एंगल जीरो डिग्री सो इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई इट विद ए व्हाट इट मींस इट मींस इट इज सिंपली टू इंटू वन जीरो डिग्री प्लस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री सो द रिजल्टेंट विल बी टू एंगल वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री so it implies the multiplication of any phasor with the operator a will rotate it by 120 degree okay so for polchi sequence let us say if it is let us say va1 and this is va2 or sorry vb1 and vc1 the positive sequence components or the first set so this is an a 120 degree again this is 120 degree however to show only the anti clockwise direction if va1 is simply va1 magnitude angle 0 degree then v b1 is nothing but the magnitude since the magnitude are same i can write the same magnitude here and its angle will be this 240 degree and v c1 will be v a1 angle 120 degree okay so i can see clearly that v b1 is nothing but a square times V A one and V C one is nothing but A times V A one since it is shifted by one twenty degree and it is shifted by two forty degree and A square is nothing but one angle two forty degree. Okay, so this operator will help us in writing the equation in very concise form. Now this operator is having. some properties what are those properties first property is very useful which is 1 plus a plus a squared is equal to 0 let us see how is it is possible this is let us say unit vector so it is one angle zero or just one and a will be Again, a unit vector in this direction, one to twenty degree, and a squared will be again a unit vector in this direction, which is two forty degree angle. Now, the sum of these two phasors, will be a phasor of unit magnitude, magnitude same as that of all phasors. However, the resultant will be. in opposite direction that is 180 degree so the resultant sum will be zero okay so in this way we can see that this property will hold now there is again property that a cube is nothing but again one why a cube can simply be written as 120 degree into 3 is equal to one angle 360 degree or just one okay so this is again 
a good property. Now there is one more property which we will utilize somewhere which is a square is equal to a conjugate. Okay. Now let us see how is that possible. From this we can see that a conjugate is simply minus 0.5 minus j0.86 okay now a squared is simply one angle to 40 degree and if i want to draw the phasor a squared will be written as if it is one angle zero a squared will be like this one angle to 40 degree so it's x component this x component will be minus 0.5 similarly this y component will be minus 0.866 so in this way it is simply minus 0.5 minus j 0.866 so this property also holds now what is a raised to power 4 it is simply a cube into a or simply just a since it is 1 so these are some properties of the operator a okay now what we will do we will try to write the these components for phase b and phase c in terms of the operator a and these components that we will do in the next slide now let us see how to utilize the operator a vb1 that is the positive sequence component for the phase A can simply be written as A squared VA1. Similarly, VB2 can simply be written as A times VB, VA2. Okay. This is for the phase B. Now for phase C, VC1 can simply be written as A times VA1 and vc2 is simply written as a square times va2 that we can see easily for the positive sequence va1 vb1 vc1 now vb1 is a square times va1 and vc1 is just a times va1 for the negative sequence if this is VA2 then this will be VB2 and this will be VC2 so VB2 will be simply A times VA2 and VC2 will be A square times VC2 so in this way I can write these components in terms of the phase A sequence components okay that I will do uh, here and I will put these values in this equation so VA is simply VA1 plus VA2 plus VA0 but VB is simply A squared VA1 plus A VA2 plus VB0 now VB0 is equal to VC0 is equal to VA0 so I will write VA0 here Okay, for the third phase VC, it is A times VA1, A square times VA2, and again it is VA0. Okay, now I will transform this equation in matrix form. What I will do? I will write the phase voltage vector. This is vector VP. This is vector VP okay the phase voltage vector comprising of three phase voltages va vb vc okay there is some multiplication matrix with these multiplication coefficients and this is the sequence component matrix i will write this matrix as vs the sequence component matrix let us say it is va0 va1 
वी ए टू नाउ वी ए इज नथिंग बट वी ए जीरो प्लस सॉरी वी ए वन प्लस वी ए टू नाउ वी बी इज नथिंग बट वी ए जीरो प्लस ए स्क्वेर वी ए वन प्लस ए टाइम्स वी ए टू एंड इट इज अगेन वी सी इज इक्वल टू वी ए जीरो प्लस ए वी ए वन एंड ए स्क्वेर वी ए टू सो इन दिस वे आई हैव गोट दिस कॉफिशेंट मैट्रिक्स आई विल कॉल इट एज दी सीक्वेंस मल्टीप्लायर मैट्रिक्स ए ओके नाउ If I take the inverse, what I will do? If I take the, let us say I multiply this equation. Let us say this is equation A. If I multiply, pre-multiply this equation with A inverse, we will see that this A matrix is not a singular matrix, so its inverse exists. so we will multiply pre multiply this with a inverse it will give me the sequence component matrix so in this way by either utilizing the a matrix if i know the sequence components i can easily get the phasors by utilizing the inverse matrix if i know the phasors i can easily get the sequence components okay now finding its inverse is very easy i will directly write this inverse matrix in the next slide now let us write the inverse of this matrix it is very easy and it is very easy to remember also you can see that this matrix is symmetric matrix so it is a property that a transpose is equal to a okay it will be utilized in one of the uh, lectures where we will see the power invariance so its inverse is simply it will be again symmetric only this is the a inverse 1 by 3 is also there since its uh, uh, inverse will be having a factor of 1 by 3 also the phasors va vb vc and in the left hand side will come the sequence component matrix va0 va1 va2 now from this equation we can clearly see that va0 can be written as 1 by 3 times va plus vb plus vc so you see that the zero sequence component is equal to the phasor sum of all three phasors divided by 3 now for line voltages for three phase line voltages v a b v b c v c a now these three phasors also represent a three phase system it might be unbalanced also these voltages might be unbalanced but according to the kvl what we are doing we are going from a to b b to c and then we are returning to a so it is making a closed loop so its sum will always be zero even though its magnitude will be different from this and its magnitude will be different from this but this phasor sum will always be equal to zero for the line voltages so from this equation we can clearly see that for line voltages there cannot be any zero sequence component in the line voltages the zero sequence component is always equal to zero okay now 
this VA, although we have taken some uh, voltage, instead we could have taken any current also. Let us say I am taking line current so now. So in terms of line current, the zero sequence component for unbalanced line currents can be simply written as 1 by 3 times IA plus IB plus IC. Okay, so let us say this is a three phase system. This is IA, this is IB and this is IC. Now this is a neutral point. Now if this neutral is not connected to somewhere and there is no path for the neutral current to flow then from KCL we can clearly see that the sum of these three currents IA, IB and IC will always be equal to zero. So whenever there is no neutral path then the zero sequence component for the currents will always be equal to zero. And since it is equal to IB zero, zero and IC zero then these all components will be equal to zero. Same as similar as the case of the line voltages. VAB, VBC0 and VCA0, the zero sequence component. Okay. Now let us consider a case for delta connected system. Let us say this is a delta connected load. This is current IA, this is current IB and let us say this is current IC. Now, what I can assume, I can assume all this load as a super node. Now you see from KCL in this super node, the sum of the all the currents entering should be equal to zero. So this clearly shows that the delta also does not provide a path to the neutral currents. So again whenever there is a delta connected load or delta connected system then the zero sequence component will always be equal to zero. Now in the next slide what we will do we will uh, see how to calculate the power in the sequence component form. The complex power in a three phase system is simply written as the sum of complex power in phase A, phase B and phase C. Okay, all these are phasors. Or in the matrix form, if it is the voltage matrix, and it is the current matrix. So it can be easily written as V transpose into I, I conjugate. So this is the complex power in a three phase system. Now this is VP the phase voltage matrix, this is the line current matrix or the phase current also if uh, we are just assuming it as a uh, delta connected equivalent, del equivalent, equivalent star connected system. Okay, so I can write it as VP transpose into IL transpose. Now from the previous slide we know that VP is simply the coefficient matrix A into the sequence component matrix. Okay, so VP transpose will simply be the transpose of Vs into A transpose. Okay, so VP transpose is simply Vs transpose 
into now a is a symmetric matrix so it is equal to a only now il or ip for a equivalent star system il is equal to ip so i can write it as ip also the phase current conjugate is simply a conjugate into the sequence component current matrix conjugate okay so s can simply be written as i will put this value and this value v s transpose into a into a conjugate into i s conjugate now a into a conjugate a into a conjugate is simply three times the identity matrix we can easily prove this by just utilizing a property a square is equal to a conjugate that we have seen in our previous slides okay so it is simply three times Vs transpose into Is conjugate, or I can write it as three into V A zero I A zero conjugate plus V A one I A one conjugate plus V A two I A two conjugate. so in this way i can find the complex power from the sequence components also now as i will be told that this is some kind of equivalent uh, per phase basis scenario so we can see that the total power in a three phase system is three times of the power connect uh, power calculated using the sequence components so this is the first phase for all three all three components so into 3 will give me the, the total power so this shows that the power will be invariant when i consider these quantities on per phase basis and i take their multiple with 3 so in this way i can calculate complex power from the sequence components also now in the next slide we will also try to solve a very simple numerical example to further grasp the concept of these symmetrical components now let us solve a very small example what is the example we have to find the various sequence components for a three phase balanced system but having the phase sequence opposite to the required phase sequence that is i am having a system with phase sequence a c b instead of a b c i am having a phase sequence of a c b however the system is balanced that is i am having something like this v a v c v b okay now i have to find the symmetrical components for this system so i can easily write the phase phasor matrix simply as let us say it is having magnitude v v i will be i will be taking it common so it will be one angle zero one angle 120 degree and one angle 240 degree okay now the zero sequence component is simply the sum of all three v a v b v c now you can clearly see without even solving i can easily tell that the uh, phase sequence matrix 
will have only one component or the one set which is the negative sequence set or the second set why because it is already a balanced system and the phase sequence is opposite to the required sequence so what will happen for a balanced system only it will be giving me one set which is the set having the opposite sequence that is the negative sequence component and all other sets will be zero phasers okay so this is clearly zero i can clearly see there are some also some of these three phasers is zero so the zero sequence component is zero for all the phases okay similarly v a1 is nothing but 1 by 3 v a a v b plus a square v c as i already told that it is equal to 0 let us verify that v is common outside one angle zero one angle 120 degree into this is the vector uh, operator a one angle 120 degree plus one angle 240 degree into one angle 240 degree this is 240 degree angle this is 120 degree angle okay so it is simply 1 plus this is a square not simply and it is a4 now a4 is simply a cube into a or simply a okay now 1 plus a plus a square is simply 0 so it is equal to 0 so v a1 is equal to 0 now since it represents a component of the balanced balance set so vb1 will be equal to 0 and vc1 will be also be equal to 0 so the sequence components for a three phase balance system but having the phase sequence opposite direction will be having only one set which will be just the negative sequence component all other sets will be equal to 0 so if you find that this lecture is helpful to you then please share and subscribe my youtube channel thank you